Friends, I am Dr. Amdekar. In the last six videos, which were related to neurodevelopmental issues, I am going to recap in this video the important messages that we all heard during this last series. Neurodevelopment is an important part of neurological examination, especially in children in particular. And what the standard method of physical examination in neurology derives the anatomical diagnosis, that is, a site of disease, but a neurodevelopmental assessment denotes the functional component of the brain function. And that is what is important. And friends, when the neurodevelopment is disturbed or abnormal, the standard neurological physical examination may be completely normal. And that's how neurodevelopmental assessment becomes an important part of a standard neurological physical examination. In the first video of this series, I myself discussed an importance of head size. Friends, we all know that a microcephaly refers to the occipitofrontal a circumference of the head if less than two standard deviation for that particular age we call it a microcephaly and very often microcephaly is associated with a developmental delay in various domains of course the exception exists and a typical autosomal dominant microcephaly where one of the two parents also have a small skull have a very normal intelligence and brain function. And so also, in a case of microcephaly caused by craniosynostosis, where the skull sutures have fused permanently very early in infancy or toddler age group, and such a patient also has a very normal brain function, but often presents with microcephaly with increased intracranial tension. Similarly is the story of a large head size and referred to as a macrocephaly, uh, more than two standard deviation and also often associated with some abnormal development. Well, there would be again an exceptions like a hydrocephalus often may not have an obvious developmental abnormalities though often there are subtle learning developmental issues and hence we need to be very careful about the head size and try to assess the neurodevelopmental issues in particular. In the next video, Dr. Chokani talked about the global developmental delay. Well, global developmental delay uh, is defined as a delay in more than one domain of development and these domains largely are a gross motor, fine motor, personal, social or adaptive and the language development. He made an emphasis that in a typical cerebral palsy, the motor development may be obviously complained of an abnormal dominant pattern, but a minor abnormalities in other domains may also exist, which are often overlooked and therefore it becomes a global developmental delay. Obviously, if somebody has a near motor developmental uh, domain but a social or adaptive cognitive functions are abnormal, it could be also another form of a delayed development often referred to as a mental delay or a mental retardation. It's important equally that uh, once you develop a clear model of a global developmental delay, one could have a very early onset of a disease like prenatal or perinatal which is characterized mostly by microcephaly or it could also present subsequently in a postnatal life either due to delayed manifestation of inborn error of metabolism or of course the acquired neurological disorder. In the following video, Dr. Curry discuss about an isolated motor developmental delay and he made an emphasis that 
it is not always neurological but it could be non neurological problems like a musculoskeletal problems a child presenting with muscular dystrophy or a myopathy may have only the motor delay and so also the neurological could be a lower motor neuron involvement like uh, not only the muscular dystrophies but also peripheral uh, nerve lesions and of course the part of the central nervous system itself most of the part of the central nervous system coming with a motor delay alone could be rarely a typical diplegic cp where the legs are more involved or sometimes even a progressive spastic diplegia with a normal mentation he also made an emphasis that a subtle abnormalities in other domains which the patient present predominantly with a motor delay needs to be very carefully assessed and often overlooked thereafter dr tushar maniar discussed a very important part of the neurodevelopmental assessment and that is a language development friends language development is different than speech development speech development is just the motor part of the language development whereas in the sequence of developing language you first develop a receptive language and thereafter a non verbal expressive language and finally the expressive language which is what we call as a speech and this is an important part of neurodevelopmental examination because normally when you have an isolated defect in the language development one needs to assess whether it defines a probable hearing impairment as the cause or of course a general brain affection but most important is neither of the two but something that is now very commonly seen probably commonly understood commonly looked for is the problem of autism spectrum disorder well friends autism spectrum disorder must be diagnosed very early in life and one could suspect it even in early infancy because it clearly is the problem of a social interaction and social communication therefore dr tushar made a very strong emphasis about the delayed language of course the hearing impairment and the brain dysfunction but also the neurodevelopmental disorder like an autism spectrum disorder and thereafter i came again in the next video talking about two important symptoms with which the patients often present out of a neurodevelopmental abnormalities and that is hyperactivity and poor school performance friends hyperactivity is not only just an excessive activity level but one that comes in the way of a normal routine function of life and this is important to pick up it may as well be due to physical brain disorders like maybe sometimes the involuntary metabolisms or other brain defects or rarely hyperthyroidism it could also be a mental disorder like a mood disorders a bipolar disorder or also a disorders due to depression anxiety stress but far more important is a situation where you have a problem where this is an isolated symptom of hyperactivity and friends again an autism spectrum disorder may either present with hyperactivity alone and on detailed analysis you pick up many other abnormalities however a typical hyperactivity attention deficit syndrome hrad may at one extreme presents only with hyperactivity and at the other extreme may present with only inattention of course a uh, mixed lesions of hyperactivity and also inattention are very common and one should not miss them again diagnosing uh, hrad or an asd is an important if important uh, in terms of a better outcome if you pick them up early right in at least 
uh, end of infancy. And in the last video, Dr. Chokani talked about the gait abnormalities. Friends, gait abnormality is another manifestation of a neurological examination. It may be a standard neurological defects or even a developmental defects. And therefore, the gait is an important part of neurology examination. And gait includes the stance, the swing, and also uh, the length of the steps, the direction of the steps, whether it's in the direction of the progression of your mobility, and so on and so forth. A mere observation of gait may often lead you to an anatomical diagnosis of a reason behind an abnormal gait. And that's why I thought we should include the gait uh, assessment as a part of a, a classical neurological examination similar to neurodevelopmental examination. Friends, this series of six videos was important because it made a strong plea that neurology is not a standard physical examination but also a functional component in terms of neurodevelopment which includes of course the mind, the behavior and so on and so forth. I hope you are enjoying our video tube channels and in the next series we are going to discuss the issues which present often with swelling or the tumor or a masses and Dr. Chukani will come up in the first video of the next series discussing uh, the clinical evaluation of abdominal masses. I hope you stay with us. Thank you very much.